Greetings and salutations, my friends. Are you interested in learning how to make a Link outfit from Tears of the Kingdom? Because I have got you covered. If you're watching this video, that's probably because you saw this video and were understandably intrigued. There's a lot to cover, so let's just get right into it, y'all. Here's what the cosplay looks like in action, so you know it's gonna be good. Just to get it out of the way, the tunic and pants are these ones, and there will be links in my description. All right, new location, because I didn't like how my face looked. Let's talk about the tunic first, okay? This tunic, this is a hot mess. Let me show you. This was my first ever sewing project, and you can definitely tell that. There are a lot of things wrong with this tunic. There's a rip in it that I had to fix. There's this weird fold going on. Whatever's happening down there for the sleeves. Something's happening down here. I probably need to fix that. The back has gotten just decimated by me wearing armor with this. It's a lot. However, I think that for a first time sewing project, it's not bad. The fabric I used was actually a blackout curtain that I got in a set of two for $10 in a thrift store. It was exactly the color I was hoping for. It like, it feels really nice and like thick and like good quality um because it's a blackout curtain if you look at actual screenshots of the game link's outfit is very like almost like a darker sky blue very like vivid i wanted my cosplay to have a darker more realistic feel to it and so i opted for this darker more muted kind of greener tone of blue and i think it actually made a world of difference. I used this lovely pattern from Made with Merida on Etsy or Merida.com on TikTok. I will warn you, if you are a small human, you will have to alter this pattern. I am a absolute beanpole of a human being and I got the extra small and I still had to do a lot of taking in to make it fit me. Granted it's also a men's pattern, but just be warned if you are on the smaller side you will have to do some altering for this pattern. I can't testify to the other sizes because I only made one of them. All the actual sewing for this tunic was done on a machine. I am not a psychopath. I used my grandma's Singer sewing machine. Full disclosure here, I did not put in the zippers. Um, my grandma did. I told her that I was gonna do it and then she said no let me do it and I was like absolutely there is one in the back and there is also one in the side of the costume next thing I want to talk about are these little guys the grommets I'm gonna to try to show you the they're nice just uh, ignore ignore the the weird wonky parts um, just pretend you can't see them it's fine I have these grommets. They're from Sewology. They have two sections. They have one with like a larger thing and one with a smaller thing. Um, if you know the technical terms for that, please don't correct me. It's more fun this way. They also come with these little tools. You put this underneath your fabric and then a grommet thing and then fabric grommet thing and this and then you just hammer it in there. I couldn't find any hammers, so I used the handle of a garden spade from my tool shed. Let me show you how to do this on a piece of scrap fabric. Hello, you take these guys and you want to make sure, like I said, that you have- Oh, hold on. What's happening there? Oh, a surprise. You want to make sure that you have a bigger one and a smaller one. The smaller one goes on the underside of your fabric and the bigger one goes on the front. So what I like to do, just to make sure they lock, I take the smaller one and I put it on the back. And then you can see it like poking through like that. I just take the bigger one and I try to like just fit it on there manually so I know that everything's in the right place. Like that. Then you take this little black thing, you set it on there, and you put this thing on top. And then you just hammer it. Um, I don't have a hammer. I'm also uh, inside and my family would get mad at me if I started hammering on their floor. Uh, that's just what you do and then it happens. The only problem is this little circle of fabric does not always uh, come out. And so sometimes you have to like dig it out with scissors and then glue all the little flyaways onto the back and it looks really messy, let me show you. Oh wow, craftsmanship. Also, I know that my bobbin thread is a different color than my top thread. Mind your business. As you may or may not have noticed, I actually did end up painting the front of these grommets silver just because I thought it worked a little bit better with the blue and the white. Now I want to talk about these gorgeous ties. Aren't they beautiful? These are actually recycled shoelaces. I just cut them into the lengths I wanted and then I hand sewed them into the seam right there. 
Let's talk about the embroidery. This is a combination of machine and hand embroidery. Yes, it took so long. No, I do not want to talk about it. Will I be talking about it anyway? Yes. I will say that after filming and a convention, some of it is starting to come out. None of the hand embroidery, just the machine work. And some of it is kind of uneven. And so at some point, I really do just need to go over all of it with some more hand embroidery and just like smooth it all out, preferably before the next costume contest. I use this embroidery thread and a big old needle. I bought this thread off of Amazon. It was super cheap. I got like a million of these thingies. And yes, it took forever. The next time I'm like, oh, I'm gonna hand embroider a cosplay. Just kill me. Just kill me at that point. Never again. Who am I getting? I'm definitely gonna do this again. Also, I used this thread from a Michaels. Um, I don't know what it's called. It's the one that matches the color of the fabric that I used. I do believe that that is just about everything for the tunic, so time to move on to the exciting part. Armor! For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm- for the- for the purpose of this demonstration, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to be wearing it to show you, also just because I friggin- I love wearing it, okay? Like, I'm just wearing an Animal Crossing t-shirt right now, and I look cool as heck, baby! First thing I want to show you is this chest piece, because I am ridiculously proud of it. This thing is made entirely out of craft foam and thrifted leather belts. And a little bit of ribbon, I forgot about that. And it's actually just made out of two base pieces. There is this one, and then there is the back one. And I don't know how many little detail pieces there are. I didn't count. By the way, all of this armor is completely patterned from scratch by me, and unless you have my exact measurements, I don't think it would fit you. But if you do happen to be 5'9 and built like a literal asparagus, hit me up. Let me show you like kind of more detail with the belts. This part is just attached on there, I think with like tacky glue? I don't even remember. Like, it's on there. Like, I've worn this for multiple filming sessions. I wore it from 5 a.m. to 1 a.m. for Dragon Con. I literally think I just used craft glue, so like, props to the craft glue. It deserves a raise. This buckle, however, does not deserve a raise. This was originally just one piece of foam sewn into this, but no, it decided to rip while I was in the middle of filming, and I had to patch it using a piece of sturdy foam and some of this. For anyone not familiar, this is Quick Seal. It is an adhesive caulk. Caulk. C A U L K. It is an industrial grade plumbing sealant. It can be used to fill cracks, it can be smoothed and sanded down and painted, and it also works as a glue. This is what I used to attach that patch on there, and I mean, it's not coming off again. At least I hope so. This is obviously not sponsored. I just, just really, really love Quick Seal. Okay, like I just for the square buckle, I had a little bit of an issue getting it to look like it does. You know, buckles have like that little thingy in the middle, the buckling thing that actually makes it buckle. Take a shot every time I say buckle. And you can see the hole where it used to be. What I did is, is I kind of just like ripped it out using my bare hands. It wasn't like super hard. This is the back. It's fine. It's okay. I don't love the seams there and uh, there. My arms don't do that. It just looks very angular and weird. Unfortunately, I have no way of fixing that now, so I just kind of have to live with it. In my opinion, what I look like from behind is none of my business, that's for sure. Let's talk about the pauldron. So this guy is also craft foam, actually 100% craft foam, and it is attached onto the chest piece with ribbon. This is actually, it goes through it and it is tied in a knot underneath, and on this side it's just glued into the underside of the armor. I chose ribbon because I wanted complete mobility in my shoulder, and I mean, I got it, like... This was all for naught because um, the uh, tunic does not have full mobility in the shoulders, but this is nice to have. As you may have noticed, if you are as much of a diehard Link fan as I am, this is not the canon design that is on his pauldron. I can only find a reference photo of uh, one side of it, so I guessed. And then I realized that I could just go into the game and take screenshots. And I realized that I had guessed well. But you know what? It is okay. 
All right, bracers. These are really cool. I'm gonna be honest, look how shiny they are. Oh my goodness. So again, the bracers are, say it with me, craft foam. However, the details on these are actually faux leather. Mm, look at that texture, baby. The way I made these, this base piece is a solid piece of craft foam, and then this edge is actually also a solid piece. The way I made them this lovely rounded shape was by heat treating and molding them. Here is a tip for beginners or people on a budget, of which I am both. If you don't have a heat gun, Use a hair dryer. I'm serious, y'all. I keep mine on the medium heat setting and the maximum air setting. It gets pretty hot, so watch out because you don't want to burn anything. But you can just use it like you would a heat gun. It's a little bit less dangerous and you may even already have one. Hand guard time. These are really cute. They're just four pieces of craft foam. It's just a shape and then you put it and then you do an, a line and then things in the middle. Like, it's the simplest part. These are attached onto the gloves with uh, hot glue, Velcro, and prayer. These gloves, by the way, they were my mom's old winter gloves. I got her permission first because I'm not a heathen. Then I just cut the fingers off really poorly and unevenly, as you can see. And that was that. The belt. You're just going to have to deal with my face being like half cut off for this entire thing. This is the belt. This is actually fabric because I wanted to be able to you know, move. However, this square thingy is actually craft foam. And then this is just another thrifted belt that is like the one that I left the most as is. One of the planned upgrades to this cosplay is making a back panel, but unfortunately there's just so many other things that are above that, like on the list. I just velcros in the back because that's easiest. This thing, this was a wallet that I found at a thrift store. So I just painted a triforce on it. The way I actually attach this to the real belt is kind of interesting. It has this back panel here, and so I made two slits in it and just threaded the belt through. All right, now that you've seen everything, let's talk actual construction. This is the foam I use. Each one of these sheets is $1.75 at Michael's. Last time I was there, I bought every single one they had. It is pretty thick, it's sturdy, it heat treats well, it's super cheap. 10 out of 10, I love it. I only have scraps of this, I don't actually have any big sheets, but this is the smaller foam that I use for like the detailing work. It's very thin, very bendable. It's just made for like little like kids crafts, I'm pretty sure. I got it off Amazon a million years ago for a Metaton cosplay. It does not heat treat. That's very important because it's not made for the head. But it is very thin, very lightweight, and very pliable. These three things are the holy grail of um, making this armor. This is Plasti Dip. Plasti Dip, much like Quick Seal, is um, my best friend and I love it. When you prime your craft foam with this, it seals all the little foam pores and it gives you a smooth surface that paint can cling to. It's also flexible, which makes it great for things like this. I prime everything with this. I use this spray paint. It is a uh, Root Beer Float from Color Shot. I'm gonna pretend like I know what I'm talking about. But this is the base color for all of this. This right here is another one of my favorite things in the universe. This is the Crystal Clear Enamel from Rust-Oleum. I sound like a beauty YouTuber. <laughs> but this is super shiny, as you can see. It makes things super durable. Now for weathering. I use this big boy. This is the biggest container of acrylic paint you will ever see in your entire life. It's a chunky boy. Now, when you're going in and you're weathering things, in order to get this really nice like ombre effect, I don't use a paintbrush to apply it. I actually use a paper towel. Also, I cannot find the paint I used for this, but I did use a slightly lighter shade of brown paint and I just used it and went along the outer lining and all these details. It's incredibly subtle, but it gives them like kind of a different hue and it just makes them pop out a little bit more from the rest of the armor. This is what the belt looks like off of me. It is very long and I do have a Sheikah Slate enamel pin on there. It is made out of two kinds of fabric. I have this really nice textured one that I just found in my scrap fabric supply. I don't know where it came from. And then I have this lighter brown furry fabric. This big rectangle is one piece, and believe it or not, this liner that goes all the way around is also one piece. It's just a giant hollow square that I cut out. This entire thing, the entire length of it all the way around, was hand sewn twice. You could also maybe like wear it as a crop top. I don't know. 
So I played around with a lot of different concepts for how to actually attach these bracers to my arm. I eventually landed on making the bracer and the arm wrap just one whole piece. The wrap is made from the same fabric as the like belt piece and these details were just painted on with acrylic. I also added this little ribbon detailing in the front just to give it like a little bit more dimension. This was all completely hand sewn by the way. Maybe I am a psychopath. That is all for the armor and holy shit, I've been recording for 40 minutes. Before we begin, please admire her. She's very self-conscious. This might be my favorite paint job that I have ever done. I just... Ugh. So the sheath itself is made entirely out of craft foam. It's the same craft foam that I showed you when I was doing the armor. The sheath itself is two pieces. I used blue and then I also hand stitched along the entire length of it. I really like that it makes it look like real leather. Each of these little guys is uh, one of these. I think it added a lot of dimension. It's, it's a really small detail, but it works, you know what I mean? This also was entirely patterned from scratch just because I needed it to exactly fit my sword. This little piece here is another thrifted belt. It's attached also with Velcro. I bought this sword off of Amazon. If you look at the blade, look at all these like divots and cuts. Those were all done with a Dremel that I borrowed from my dad. After I Dremeled this, um, I didn't bother priming it because... Eh. And then I gave it an entirely new custom paint job. I wanted it to look like this, like how it does in Breath of the Wild. All of this was just done with a combination of that giant jug of black acrylic paint that I showed you and uh, this silver paint. I actually mixed a custom color for the hilt and cross guard of the sword. I think I used like black, dark blue, purple, and the silver paint. And then I used silver on all of the like high spots to make it look super realistic and cool. I went ahead and I added this wrap. I have no idea what it was originally. If you are also a uh, maker of things and a hoarder of small items, you understand. Moving right along, these are my lovely elf ears. These are the ones that I bought on Etsy. Unfortunately, it says that the shop has closed, but you can most likely find the very same ones from a different shop. These are really great. Literally, my only issue with these is that because of how you attach them with spirit gum, they do start to melt off of you in the heat. The spirit gum starts melting and they just slide and then they come off, which was not fun to deal with during Dragon Con. The spirit gum has kind of destroyed the paint job on this part of it, but you can still see it on this part, which is fine. But these were hand painted with a combination of those water-based miniature paints and also acrylic. I color matched my skin tone so that they would look a little bit more realistic. And then I just painted in some shading. The gold earrings are these ones on Amazon. These little blue studs, I don't know where they came from. I think that I got them for like my birthday or something but I've had them for years and so when I was putting this outfit together I was just digging through my little drawer of like earrings and jewelry bits and decided to use them so I unfortunately do not know where they're from. These gorgeous opal dangly earrings, which will give you the power of the element of water of course, came from a gem and mineral show several years ago. I just think that they look really really nice with the elf ears. We are just about finished. If you have any other questions at all please please leave them down in the comments. I will be so happy to answer you. If you don't know me from TikTok, I'm really surprised that you're here, but this is my TikTok anyway, and you should go look at it. My link tree is in my bio, that's where all my stuff is. If you're watching this and you've like made it to this point, you're amazing and I love you and I hope that this met all of your expectations. Thank you so much for watching, that is all for me. Bye!